bodies will try to adapt because now it's not functioning as it should be and then you'll have uh, metabolic efficiency because you, you're lacking a lot of, uh, of the resource that you need to be functional. And then we get into uh, what we call here the refeeding syndrome. It's mainly the talk I wanted to talk about. What refeeding syndrome is, is that while all that concept happened, and this is why I had a small, a uh, quick talk on uh, what starvation malnutrition is that by the time that you get in the late stage, so again, not like, you know, you skip a dinner for one day or two days and you're stuck in the wood because you had to survive uh, I don't you won't really have refeeding syndrome but if it's been a few days four or five days and you were not able to uh, and it, it, it's not really a much how much days it's more about how much nutrition you got is that the body will start doing all those those things that we were talking about so using all our sugars using all our depletions um, and um, all our tissues that we have and it's gonna start also losing some of his electrolytes and what happens with refeeding is that once you reintroduce uh, uh, food inside the body the body is in a state where it's not quite ready to receive this and then it can creates a lot more uh, complication. Um, so what happens is that um, we have some electrolytes. Uh, what electrolytes is is that our body wor works a lot, like especially like our muscle or hearts, or, um, works with electricity differential. So you have negative, positive, and just like a battery where you have like a plus and a minus on one side and negative on the other side. Our body has the same thing and so when we want to do contraction of our muscles if I want to do this it's a whole balance of uh, things like sodium and potassium which are electrolytes and it creates an imbalance in the electricity to be able to create that impulse of electricity and create this contraction that I'm doing with my hands right now but uh, what happens in starvation is a lot of those electrolytes gets out of whack and some of them are inside the cells and some are outside the cells and so things like calcium magnesium and phosphate are usually inside the cells but when they get depleted in the body the body uses the, this reserve in the cells to get them out um, to maintain a certain level inside the blood but the problem with this is that when I start feeding them when we use uh, to, for food to be able to go into the cells, I uh, use insulin, and insulin will rebring some of those electrolytes back into the cells. And when it does that, that means you don't have enough in your blood to sustain, and then you can get a lot of complications. Like um, people can have cardiac arrest, they can have seizures, they can have a lot of complications, and it's all due because of this corner over here what we call hypokalemia so everything in medicine that has hypo h-i-p-o means low so here it's kalemia because the K so that's potassium so hypo potassium hypo magnesium hypo phosphate and one vitamin in particular called thiamine and you can't deficiency and salt and water retention that creates edema and so this is all part of the refeeding syndrome one of the issues, so in, in the hospital, what we do is we send some blood work and we monitor this and we can uh, replenish and monitor exactly how we do it. We can control the feeding and stuff. In a self-reliance medicine situation, in a disaster medicine, you won't have those blood tests. So then it becomes, how can I prevent this and make sure that that doesn't happen without... Um, create more problem when I cannot even evaluate it so the first thing is to recognize it and so if you have anybody that kind of have like that starvation system you have a high suspicion for those kind of uh, refeeding syndromes and it's all uh, related to again in that last, uh, last thing um, so what we do with those is that first the pa patient should be uh, reassure and then check for injuries so check if they've been bleeding if they have like wound cares that needs to be in stuff and what kind of illness so do they have like fever chills things like that and then dehydrations 
and then slowly start them back so if they come to you and they're like starving and again it's been again not like the two or three days like you know when you go in the mountains and after a weekend like oh man i really need a burger that that's okay but if it's been three weeks that you didn't eat anything that burger can be really dangerous so when you start slowly it's gradually get to them so instant oatmeal granola bar small piece of jerky um, and what you're trying to do is small meals and tell them one big meals and you mostly what you want to give is sodium potassium protein and carbohydrates and you supply them enough fluids so that they pee every two to four two to three hours and so it's not just like uh, oh I pee like you know they have to pee frequently so that way you're supplementing the hydrations um, and so it's all to prevent it so without the blood test if you can do that slowly that's that's the whole way um, another thing too in this I'll put a um, a video on it. it's a little bit medical term but I think it's kind of well explained and ex uh, it will explain so in our body uh, what we have is sodium so salt and water follows salt and so but we have a lot of people when they don't quite understand that concept is that when we have like the body so if I let's say I drink a glass of water only one third really stays in my vein two thirds of it call what we call extra vascular uh, or intracellular so that means it's mostly in the cell and the other third stays either so we have the cells that have fluid inside them and then outside the cell in between the cell there's a little bit of fluid there and then the rest is what we have in our veins so when I drink a glass of water if I have a lot of malnutrition or if my cell salt is uh, too high or if uh, I don't have enough albumin like we were talking about water will shift from one zone to the other zone um, and this has to do what we call with tonicity it means uh, how concentrated uh, one substance is versus a, another substance and it kind of if you did a little bit of chemistry in high school it kind of comes back to it so again I don't want to get too much into it but one thing I wanted to mention with this is if you look let's say your big supplies is those uh, mountain house if you look they have a lot of sodium on them and so if you have someone and you would give them sodium and you have already an, an imbalance of sodium and water you could get them worse especially people like we're selling about what we call congestive heart failure so that means like they have too much fluid in their heart canada so if they have uh, if they're on the older side elderly people uh, or people with heart uh, issues uh, giving them sodium and or like those mountain house can be a little bit tricky and can um, put them on the bad side that you don't really want them in um, so there's a video that's going to be attached kind of talk a little bit about that water and stuff I don't want to get too much into it because um, it's a little bit of complex uh, uh, complex thing but just to be aware of it just be careful of when you give people especially people that have dehydrations or fluid imbalance be careful about how much sodium you give them and so here uh, an easy recipe that you can do um, that would provide good food to nutriment so not too much fluid uh, not too much salt not too much fluid a good amount of um, of uh, sodium and uh, no, no, potassium and carbohydrates and all this and so if you have somebody that again um, you start them slowly you start them with soup you start them with um, some uh, liquid and if you give them um, we talked about that in the past if you give them uh, things like Gatorade and things just dilute those because they have a lot of sugar and that's again another um, component that has a greater similarity and it's going to pull some water so here a quick little recipe that could be done pretty quick um, and um, it would be a good substance a little bit like a milkshake that you could give them slowly and um, slowly get them come and then skip all those complications that uh, you could have 
And uh, here's uh, another thing from the from the book uh, that I was talking about a little bit more um, in details what I've been uh, saying, but kind of put them in uh, points that can be uh, read. So um, so that was the presentation. Hopefully, uh, just have questions if you have. I tried to. That, it's been like a long time been trying to do that talk, but it's hard without getting into it into the physiology of it and it's hard also I don't want to get too much into it but if you don't get too much into it you don't quite understand but I'll, I'll put some resource down and some place to read but if you have any questions just leave them down and I'll talk to you soon